It's the 18th of November and I'm heading to Central Station to start the secrets of the Bankstown Line. The bad side of railway travel is delays. Today it's points failure at Mossvale, making my train 40 minutes late out of Picton. There are lots of building works going on at Central Station in preparation for the extension of the Metro and Central Walk. I have previously stated that we will be looking at the city circle in the video of its own. So we start by heading south to Redfern. For such a major station, it surprises me that Redfern only has lifts to four of their platforms, one being the underground Illawarra plat line platforms. We have also covered Redfern in my lifting to the line video. Next stop along the line is Erskineville. At the northern end of Erskineville, platform 3, you will see where the Illawarra line bends around to the right to go into the tunnels. Whilst on the train going through Erskineville, you probably have noticed this artwork on the retaining wall. But have you noticed that Erskineville was planned to have an additional two platforms to the west of platform 1? However, no tracks were ever laid in this section. Erskineville and St. Peter's are both currently serviced only by Bankstown Line and a few peak hour MacArthur Line services. Currently making platforms 3 and 4 unused, with trains on the Illawarra Line racing through these platforms. With the construction of the South West Metro, which will take over the Bankstown Line between Sydenham and Bankstown, it is assumed that the Illawarra Line will once again stop at these stations. As with Erskineville, St Peter's also has platforms that were never in use, but it's more pronounced at St Peter's. The platforms were built in the 1970s, intending to be opened with the Eastern Suburbs Line. In the cross-cutting measure, this was cancelled. At Sydenham, there is also a lot of building works going on. Platform 1 and 2 are being converted to the Sydney Metro Southwest. There is also another concourse being built on the north side of the station. In 1884, Sydenham Station opened as a major station to serve the town of Marrickville. It was actually called Marrickville until 1895, when the beginning of the Bankstown Line was opened as far as Belmont. Sydenham then became an important junction station for the Illawarra, Bankstown and later East Hills Line trains. Up on the concourse there is a timeline of the history of Sydenham Station. Just past Sydenham is the XPT Service Centre, where all the regional trains are serviced. When the spur line was opened to Belmore, the railway line was closer to the township of Marrickville, and thus the new Marrickville station was opened in 1895. On platform 2 and on the concourse to lifts, you have these displays which provide a history of Marrickville as well as a history of the railway in general, including how tickets were originally written on pieces of paper and identifying the first people of the land on which Merrickville sits. Merrickville was once an island platform station, however the old platforms on the north side of the island platform was converted into the Metropolitan Goods Line, which starts at Botany Freight Docks and goes to Enfield, and then beyond. The goods line was opened in 1915. Next stop is Dulwich Hill. Now please excuse me while I go off and rant, but to me accessibility for public transport links is important. It's the people who cannot drive who rely most on the public transport system, although workers may find it more convenient to catch the train to work. Now I understand that this section of the line will be upgraded with the Southwest Metro, but currently Dulwich Hill does not have a lift down to the platforms. However, Dulwich Hill 
is the terminus for the light rail that goes for a Leichhardt and Piermont. It does have a lift down to the light rail platform. Why would they not put a lift down to Dulwich Hill Station so that people with wheelchairs can transfer from light rail to the main railway? Anyway, rant over. Next station, Helston Park. Helston Park was opened as Fern Hill. Like Marrickville, Platform 1 sits on what used to be an island platform. However, the Metropolitan Goods Line led to its disuse. At Canterbury, I thought the ramps leading up to the concourse might be wheelchair accessible. However, at the top, around the bend, you get to some stairs. There was once a shuttle train that went from Canterbury Station to a Canterbury Racecourse siding platform which used a platform that was on the Metropolitan Goods Line. However, this is now being fenced off. Canterbury Signal Box was the major signal box for the Bankstown Line once the Metropolitan Goods Line came through, until a more modern signalling system was set up at Sydenham. The next station is Campsie. The main street at Campsie is right above the railway station, and there is a variety of food options. I purchased some pork buns and walked around the corner to an Anzac memorial in a mall. The Heritage Building, which is now the Station House Hotel, was only repurposed as a hotel in the last couple of years. It previously had nothing much to do with the railway. Campsie is also the last station that the Metropolitan Goods Line had an effect on. Once upon a time, trains on this line terminated here at Belmore. The intention was to extend the railway to Bankstown and later Liverpool in order to take some pressure off the main southern railway. However, the depression of the late 1890s did not see the railway go through to Bankstown until 1909. The overhead railway building was built in 1930s which I find this signing for Belmore Station interesting. Belmore Sports Ground is a short walk from Belmore Railway Station, as is the Canterbury Bankstown Legs Club. La Clemba is the next station along the line, which is another place where there is an Anzac Memorial. This overbridge was built in 2001, after fire considerably damaged the previous structure. Wiley Park Station was opened in 1938 to make a connection to King George's Road. Wiley Park is the only station on the line which originally opened with side platforms. All others opened with island platforms. The suburb of Punchbowl is named after a circular valley which is actually in today's Belfield. The Punchbowl area is known for its Lebanese cuisine. Bankstown is next stop. The railway arrived in Bankstown in 1909. It wasn't until 1928 when the loop was complete around to Regent's Park. The old building above Bankstown Station has been incorporated into the upgraded building that was completed in 2015. This disused platform was once a parcels office. Bankstown will be the terminus of the Sydney Metro. New platforms for the Metro will be built to the east of the current station. On to the next stop, Yaguna. Yaguna opens up onto the busy Hume Highway. It remains to be seen what will happen to these stations between Bankstown and Lidcombe and Liverpool once the Metro terminates at Bankstown. Next station is Barong. Barong is quite an exposed station and has what currently appears to be a temporary overbridge. I'll stay at this platform, thanks. After Barong, the Bankstown line splits into two. One arm goes via Regent's Park to Lidcombe and the other heads west towards Cabramatta. The junction after Barong is known as the Sefton Park Junction. This junction is a triangle junction but it also has the Southern Sydney Freight Line 
coming in from Chalora, weaving through the junction. We will look at the Lidcombe branch first. The railway arrived at Regent's Park from Lidcombe in 1912 and was the terminus at that time. The branch towards Bankstown was opened in 1928 and the railway from Regent's Park towards Cabramatta was opened earlier in 1924. Regent's Park Library is in the same park that one exit of Regent's Park Station opens out into. The present building at Regent's Park was built in 1945. At Barala you have this old style bench seat. Down in the concourse area there is this art installation which was completed in conjunction with Barella Primary School students. For me it's an example of where a community can bring an increased interest to a local building using the members in that community. At Lidcombe, the Bankstown line uses a bay platform. Trains from Bankstown towards Lidcombe used to head back to the city via the Inner West Line and complete the loop. However, this was stopped once the bay platform was built. You can learn more about Lidcombe in my Leppington and Inner West Line video. Now back to Barong to change trains to head out the branch towards Carabamatta and Liverpool. Originally to go from Lidcombe to stations between Sefton and Caramar, you could get a direct train as trains would go to the city from Liverpool via Regent's Park. Apparently there are a few services on the peak hours that use this part of the track. The first station on the Cabramatta and Liverpool branch is Sefton. Sefton's importance as a railway station has decreased over the years. The overbridge once had a booking office and parcels office, but no buildings remain on the top of the station concourse. At this point I noticed this branch only receives a train every half hour, so I found that I could walk to the next station and still make the next train. Next station is Chester Hill. You'll notice that the South Sydney freight line to the south of all these stations along this section of the line. This line separates the freight from passenger services and rejoins the main southern railway past MacArthur. And that's the train I want to catch. Leightonfield is the next stop. During the Second World War, there was a munitions factory close by this site. The federal government paid for a station for the sole purposes of bringing its workers to the munitions factory. The station was not handed over to the state government until the 1960s. There is also these lovely old signs at Leighton Field. Next stop is Villawood. The Villawood area was once known as Woodville Road, after the busy road nearby. However, there was some confusion with a place called Woodville near Newcastle, so they transposed the two words and came up with Villawood. Caramar is the next stop. Caramar originally opened as South Fairfield, however the area had already been known as Caramar before the railway came through this area. Thus the name changed two years after the station's opening. The last three stations on the Bankstown line are Cabramatta, Warwick Farm and Liverpool, which I have covered in my Leppington line video. Remember me commenting on these? No? Go and have a look at the video. Time for me to head home. Another line done. If there's anything I've missed on the Bankstown line, please leave a comment below. And please like and subscribe to the Travelling Trent channel. Click the notification bell so you will be notified when I release another video.